If you're like me, you probably barely survived math class back in high school or college. But the irony is that we ended up in a field where math is kind of important. Sure, it might not feel like it when you are styling web apps or performing CRUD operations on a database, but entire fields of programming ranging from game development to machine learning are built on top of vectors, matrices and transformations. This is where linear algebra comes in. And, believe it or not, despite the fact that you are probably still having nightmares where you are naked in front of your math teacher, linear algebra is actually really easy to understand. Let me show you. Let's say you have a bunch of nickels and pennies and you want to know how many of each you need to have 23 cents. Of course, to get to the total, you need to sum up an exact number of nickels with an exact number of pennies. Luckily for us, this is pretty easy to solve. You could divide 23 by 5 and see that you couldn't use more than 4 nickels and will use 3 pennies to fill in the rest. Of course, we could at any time replace a nickel with 5 more pennies and this is also a valid solution. Following the same path, we can convert more nickels into pennies and if we want to get fancy, we could technically have a negative number of nickels and compensate with more pennies. So we got variables, constraints and a bunch of possible solutions that all satisfy the same rule. In mathematical terms, this is called a linear equation because when you plot it, the result is always a straight, flat line. We can create a plot by choosing two x and y pairs which solve the equation and then drawing these points on an axis. Then we'll join the two points with a straight line and this is the equation visualized. Now, for any other pair of x and y we choose, we know for certain that the point will land somewhere on this line as long as the pair satisfies the equation. But things get much more interesting than this. The trouble starts when you're not just trying to reach one total, but two at the same time. Let's say now you also want the total number of coins to be exactly 11. Suddenly, you're not just solving for how to make 23 cents, you also have to make sure the nickels and pennies together add up to 11 coins. This is where things stop being simple arithmetic and start dipping into real linear algebra territory. Since it is getting a bit more difficult to simply guess the response, we need a systematic way to find out a pair of x and y which solves both equations at the same time. And to do this, we'll use an easy technique with a fancy name. Gaussian elimination is the process of subtracting multiples of one equation from another to try to narrow down the value of one variable. In our case, we'll simply subtract the second equation from the first one and we'll end up with a single variable linear equation. If you don't know how to solve this, then you are probably as bad at math as my 6-year-old son. For the rest of us, the solution should be at least familiar. We'll divide both sides by 4 to get the value of x and then we'll use the value of x in the second equation to find y. Now, in all fairness, getting to the solution isn't such a big achievement. This technique has been around for over 2000 years. It was first described in ancient China long before anyone used the term linear algebra. Then, it was independently developed later by European mathematicians in the 18th century, so we aren't really operating with cutting-edge ideas here. Now, this is where things get interesting and you should pay attention. This is one of those moments when you stop paying attention in class for a second and then all of a sudden the teacher is talking in a different language and he jumps from counting coins to building rockets. What we've done so far is called the row picture where we are looking at each equation as a line and the point where those lines meet is our solution. The column picture assumes that instead of having two separate equations, we have only one equation where the numbers from the columns become vectors. So each column represents the direction and scale of one variable and our goal is to find how much of each vector we need to combine to reach the target point. The good news is that vectors can be plotted as well, so we can solve this in a visual manner. We'll first use the vector values to draw their representation on the plot and add in the point we are trying to reach. Then, in a manner similar to adding coins, we can add and combine vectors together to get to that specific target. So we visually solved our equation by adding 3 vectors for the x value and 8 vectors for the y value. If we now update these values in our equation, we need to multiply a scalar, which is basically a single number, by a vector, so we simply multiply it by each number in the vector. We are then left with 2 vectors that have to be added together, so we'll add the individual elements of each vector. These are the basics of linear algebra, but you might be asking yourself why this really matters. Well, it matters because everything that moves, rotates or changes in a program depends on it. If you've ever seen a character move across the screen, a camera pen in a 3D game or a robot arm pick up an object, you've seen linear algebra at work. In graphics, for example, your computer doesn't see an actual cube, but a bunch of coordinates in 3D space which are manipulated by applying a series of linear transformations. Machine learning isn't much different. 
all those fancy models and buzzwords are just linear algebra on steroids, and every neural network layer is basically a giant matrix multiplication. Your inputs are turned into vectors, and those vectors are multiplied by weight matrices, adjusted by biases, and passed through activation functions. If you like this video, you should check out one of these ones next. Also, please click the like button, the subscribe button, the comment button, the hype button, the notification button, and any other button YouTube is throwing your way these days.